check. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the after show, the uh, the debate on Jaronism between uh, uh, Cubala, who is uh, um, uh, Ali G from Wish.com. He had challenged uh, FTFE and myself to debate, and it was it was very, very, uh, very sad for, for Kevin. He he had no clue. Anyway, go 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 catch that on either Jaron's channel or or FTFEs. I'd, I mean, I'd recommend FTFEs, but um Craig is here. He was just uh he just headed off uh, to to the loo as they say over across the pond. Um <laughs> poor, poor, poor Kevin. He had no idea what he was doing. This is uh, this is what I got uh, for bingo. I didn't quite I didn't quite get if he, he didn't say wandering stars, I would have got a bingo there. Um yeah, not not much. He he did stay focused. He he you know, a lot of a lot of flat earthers have some pretty severe, like, can't stand focus issues. But he did. It was it was pretty good. So good for him there. Um, he tried to. It was it was interesting. He tried to shame us for not having measurements when he was the one making the claim that uh, that ice rinks are flat. So he he didn't have measurements of flatness of ice rinks, which would which are his claim, right? I, and uh, our claim is, it the ice rinks are too small to to uh, measure any uh, curvature using normal. All right, welcome to Craig. How you doing? Hi. Uh, well, that was fun. Oh my gosh, the subject was ice rink. So he went off. Do you remember when he went off talking about building projects and houses and all yeah. that? And then I responded to that by talking about, you know, buildings and houses and stuff like that. And he's like, "Oh no, the topic is ice rinks, like things and houses and stuff." Sorry, and, that was and me. A little audio clip going of uh, audio loop going. Anyway, like he he's the one that went off onto that topic. I was just responding on that topic, so. It was, it was brilliant. Um, he, he just did the perfect flirt thing of ignoring everything we said yeah. and just resetting each time. And um, I knew that he had gone and got those measurements because he kept hinting at it. Oh. Um, well, I say measurements, which is why I specifically started talking about making sure it's the right tool for the right job and everything, because he was treating that like a massive boom, gotcha. But we'd already like killed it in the water. You know, it was already dead. You know they they never know, even remotely how to, how to do a proper measurement. It's never, never, never what they do. They they don't know margin of error. They don't know anything about confounding variables. Never do they they do anything. All they know is let's do the one thing that we know gives us the results that we want, and we'll ignore anything that might affect it. Doesn't matter if it's um, you know, not got the right ability to actually measure what we want or anything they're just going to get it wrong <laughs> but uh i quite like jaren's format because flat yeah. earthers aren't smart yeah. enough to use it the right way oh my gosh he he just he just he just chewed up his time rambling like an insane person standing on the corner <laughs> with his pants down yeah i know <laughs> 17 minutes we had we just, just 17 <laughs> minutes and it wasn't that was it worst was, when but his ramble, his thing. ramble was just nonsense. It wasn't like, oh, I want to. I never wanted to jump in and and correct anything because he was just making a fool of himself the whole time. He was just talking. There was like nothing to even debate. I was just like, okay, tick 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 goes his time. Oh it's God. just hilarious um, oh. how unaware he is. <laughs> like you, you messaged me during it, and you're like, he is so unaware, and he is. He has absolute zero self-awareness yeah. it's insane it's... it's i love how they always they always take a, a victory lap after they lose 
Yeah. And, and I came here and I destroyed you. No, you didn't, Kevin. You really didn't, my friend. He, but, you know, he's going to be all over Facebook going, yeah. I destroyed them on Jaren's. I he's showed measurements. Bragging. Yeah. Of and course. then he was it's like, precious. I put it on a box. Good for you. Well done. <laughs> how did, you know, what's the margin of error of the level? How, how, how precise is the level? How many degrees or tenths of a degree? No idea. It's just got a bubble on it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and like the, the laser line, uh, you know, gets thicker and thicker and thicker as you move away as well. Like, right? So you really can't tell. And it's yeah. just, oh. Yeah. yeah. So that his, his ruler went to millimeters and, and yeah. it needs to, and, and uh, it needs to be 0 0.07 millimeters. Um, you need, you need a, you know, more than that. It needs to measure to probably 0 0.01 millimeters to, to have a meaningful measurement and not even close. So, um, yeah, it great, is ridiculous. Great Sorry. guy. Uh, Schrodinger's chat for two Canadians says you can't stop a puck if it disappears bottom up. Oh my gosh. So I didn't, I didn't get to this. I'm going to show, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, let's see. There it is. I got to get my browser set up. The this is this is important, and they they never they never have any idea. Where'd you go? You went somewhere. All right. Here here is um I measured this myself. This is on a lake in Minnesota. Here it is. Uh, I this is a an imperial ruler, but I've set it at metric uh, uh, position. So this is half a meter above the ice, 0. 0.2 degrees Celsius. Here is one meter above the ice, 0. 0.7 degrees Celsius, one and a half meter, 0. 0.9, and sorry, half meter, one and a half, two meters, and then uh, two and a half is one point. Sorry, this is at two meters. Anyway, never mind my incorrect numbers there. This is two meters up because you can see it's just above six feet, 1.2 degrees. So from one half meter up, to two meters up, it's a full degree Celsius. Uh, now, if you go to my website, mctune.net slash refraction, I have uh, other measurements of refraction on there. I've read through all these. These are really good uh, resources. Um, but the important one, here's a... Uh, this Andrew Thomas Young here talks about refraction near the horizon. And uh, there's the overview. Subject matter the, expert. The, the subject matter expert, according to Quantum Eraser. Let's let's hear. Andrew Thomas Young, San Diego State University, Astronomy Department. There we go. The subject matter expert. Thank you for that. So, um, uh, I mean, he got he's got other stuff to say as well. I'm an idiot. I'm a stupid moron. Yeah. Ugly face and a big butt and my butt smells. And I'd like to kiss my own butt. I'm an idiot. Forgot it. Yep. Thank you for that. I QA. love that. Anyway, so have a look at this page here if you're interested. Uh, the point is that that um, over the over the um, if you have over ten meters elevation, one degree Celsius of temperature change. Then the curve, uh, the, the radius of the curve of the arc, the light, will be the radius of the Earth. If it's, if it's one and a half meters for that, then the radius of the, the curve will be significantly less. So, now right next to the, the ice where he was at, don't know. He'd have to, he'd have to get measurements of, of the, the variation there. Probably to get to 0 0.07 millimeters, he'd, he'd need to have, you know, precision of tenth or hundredth or thousandth of a degree, uh, and along with hundredths of a millimeter. Um, and a functioning so, prefrontal cortex. Well, that would help. So, yeah. But uh, Bob Tosh did a super chat for one pound 99 pence. No, oh, just 90 pence. 90 pence. Is that how you say it? One pound ninety or one pound. One pound ninety pence. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Well done, Bob. Proper money's there. 
And then it's a Rubik's look there. It's a Rubik's who's been a member for 14 months says 14 months already. Yeah. Time flies when you're stuck in tunes basement. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Emerson Biggins says rookie can can be in the chat says he knows your debate opponent. So, you know, Kevin in real life. Oh, um, I'm sorry. We should, we should, you want to come on? Yeah. Okay. Tell us about okay. him. Send me an email, mc2 at mc2.net. I will send you. You can join it. Join us if you want. And if you just want to do a uh, voice, that's fine. Uh, it's all good. Either way. Because last time we had someone on that he knew when he brought his neighbor on. Um, oh because he said his neighbor is like a physics person would agree with him. And his neighbor came on and went, no, Kevin, you're wrong. <laughs> Which is always fun. Oh, my gosh. It says he's his landlord. It's He's his landlord. Says, oh, yeah. yeah. Bring uh, him on, bring him on, bring him on. Rookie says, hey, hey, Craig, hey, MC Toon. Uh, he is my tenant. He is a lost cause. Well, we know that. Pretty much all Flat Earthers are, so. Uh, oh, please bring it. So please come good. on. Oh, my God. Uh, you are mopped for $5. Says, nice guys. Nice job, guys. But Flat Earthers remain undefeated in debate. Just ask any Flat Earther. Even the Flat Earthers in the chat over on Jaren's were like, this wasn't good. <laughs> no oh I, I i think i've done like five debates on jaren's now right and each one of them are like please don't let that person debate on behalf of flat earth again <laughs> oh my gosh <clears throat> that's so so funny um <clears throat> oh his boy he's so he's so confident he's like he, he he said he'd never lose in french like he has no measurements he has no empirical evidence he just says it looks flat because i go up in tall buildings Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, that's his, his answer is I go up to all buildings and I do it daily and that's gonna that that's make it your flat, how <laughs> how does how does that's not a valid measurement that that's how that's the problem is okay flat earthers are dumb let me if you're watching this flat earthers listen to me right now let's just listen to me when people told you when you were growing up oh you're so smart they were saying that they were patronizing you. Yeah. Right. It's like when they, you, you got the, the thing in the square hole, you know, oh, well done. You're such yeah, a yeah. smart boy. So also yeah. when your soccer team did not win a single game all year, all season, and you got a trophy, you didn't get a trophy because you were good at playing soccer. That's the same thing. And, uh, yeah. Also, did you notice how your parents never kept the pictures you make? on the fridge by the morning they'd be gone did, <laughs> and there did, was that not there was so much you and there and there was a little pile of soot in the middle of the, the kitchen table <laughs> what's this let's spit on it <laughs> <laughs> mommy i made a painting backhand oh my gosh and and then <laughs> so i i was watching jared's chat it was it was great the i i posted the pictures uh, that i took in florida yeah. And they're like, that was a flat horizon. Like, again, scale. How yeah. much curve would you expect to see from 10 feet above the surface of the water? How many pixels on that camera lens would there be a bulge from left to right? But it's flat. Less than one. That's that's how that's how dumb you are. Okay, so I, I didn't finish this. You are that dumb. The fact that you can't do these types of things and answer these types of questions when we ask them, how much curve do, would you expect, is proof that you're dumb. If you can't uh -huh. formulate a hypothesis and then compute the consequences, how much curve should you see left to right? How much bulge should there be from back to front? How much? How many degrees of curve? What did you do to account for a, a, a confounding variables? If all of those things, you, you get to like... I have no damn clue how to answer that then that's because you're not you're not equipped to do it you should you should just have the humility to say oh you can't handle it it's not your thing yeah okay um i had a flat earther send me um a video on facebook today and he said oh look i can prove to you gravity doesn't exist and he had like a receipt stub from walmart or something and he blew underneath it and made it float. He's like, see, 
if gravity is so strong, how can I do that? And I'm like, just okay. no, like they they are incapable of steel manning our position. They always will be. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they have no idea. But to be fair, we can't steel man them either. But that's well, because they, they don't have a position to steel man. They don't man. have a position, right? We have a position. They don't understand it. They don't have a position, and they think their position is awesome. That's what's funny. Yeah. Right. You you look You're at right. them. I can't explain it, but they they <laughs> come. The whenever I look at like a a live stream coming up, or that's a flat earthers live stream. There's a couple people in there that are declaring the Earth is flat. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, this is their daily mantra. They have some yeah, sort of a, like a religious, a religious, yeah. Um, that's too bad. <laughs> it is it, it that you know? It's ironic that they always call us brainwashed because it literally is the other way around. Yeah, uh, and and it it can be it can be sad to see, but always hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, industrial nerd says, "Won't the real MC tune stand up?" Me. So if if it. you. Know, if you've got a gun and you have to shoot one of us because the other one's the evil MC tune, just remember it's the good looking one. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. Tim Tully says, Kevin made my brain hurt. If Kevin had a brain, it would hurt, but he's immune. Uh, Barry F says, instead of a horizon, we should call it a boson flux inhibitor. <laughs> boson flux inhibitor that's great love it all right this is uh laguna loray is that how to say it you think craig l-o-i-r-e for 10 pound says do you think that jaron may change his mind about fe after he has more and more incredibly stupid people saying stuff that even he does not believe in for the cause of flat earth i well hope we do what we do so that hopefully somebody watches it and says, oh, dear God, they are stupid. I can't believe that. Yeah. I can no longer be associated with this, with this stupidness. Or or they're like looking into it and they're like, wow, that flat earther really screwed up bad. And it does seem to be that the flat earthers that Jaron has on to debate on behalf of the flat earth are, are really not good oh, debaters or, you know... All right, flat earthers aren't smart, but you know, even for flat earthers, these people are are dumb. Like, um, did you see any of the debate between me and uh, Ozian and and Dave and Dawn? I haven't yet. Oh, well, Dawn kept saying that she's disproved the sun is far away because it traces a sine wave in the sky, and then sine she held wave. up a picture. Yeah, then she held up a picture of two half circles connected like this, uh, and we tried to point out that that's not a sine wave. But she she oh didn't gosh. she didn't believe it. That's um, so dumb. And, and and then right at the beginning of the debate, um, she made a whole rant about how NASA came up with the heliocentric model, um, and I asked her to to verify that, um, and she's like, "Well, no, I didn't mean that." And then we tried to explain to her that we don't even think the heliocentric model is, is you know we don't think the sun is the center of the universe. You know, and they, yeah, should, they just don't understand <laughs> that that was done away with you know not long after copernicus was yeah, yeah there's the galaxy too but we don't know enough about it initially and then over time developed more knowledge of it but even in the late 1800s michaels and morley mentioned it in their paper in 1887 yeah. but said we don't know yet anything about the motion so that would have to be something that would be in, included in some future thing well now we have much better information um on my website mc2.net slash sun i think i have some measurements of the speed of the the solar system through the um the galaxy as it Which rotates it said we're not moving yeah of course and then um that you know, you know, Witsit and the his uh his ether okay, cosmology yeah. crew. They yeah. they like to to reference this this measurement from Mike uh, from not my from um Dayton Miller. And Dayton Miller in his paper concludes that the earth the whole solar system is moving towards a point in the south celestial sphere at four hundred kilometers per second. That's the paper that they reference. Their, well, yeah. their paper. Someone that Kevin spoke to said the word physics. Yes. 
So, so th think about this. This is Kevin. This is this is Austin and 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 the Ether Cosmology uh, people. Their their number one go to thing concludes that the solar system is moving four hundred kilometers per second towards a point in the south celestial sphere. That is the first law of Flurf. Right there, totally embodied. And they're like, oh, we reject that part of it and accept the other part of it based on the measurements that he did and the numbers that he did that we've never seen. And they're not available anymore. Nope. And then they're like, here, have a look at this one by Minera in uh, Colombia. Oh, well, Minera concluded that the solar system was moving toward a different point in the South Celestial Sphere at a different velocity. That didn't work. They're like, oh, well, that's because, uh, you know, th these these measurements were done, the Michelson Morley was done in, you know, in a basement in Cleveland. And Dayton Miller did it on the top of a mountain. So it's better because it's on top of a mountain. If it's not on top of the, you know, if it's not there, then it doesn't count. Well, Munera did it in a brick building. They yeah, they, 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 they don't science. reference that one anymore. They don't reference but that one anymore. don't understand science, so this, no. you know, not really... You, you, know, know. you know what they reference now? What? Um, uh, a, a paper by a guy named Galev that used GPS satellite timing. Yeah, but that's ground positioning system, remember? No. Nothing to do They're with talking about the the uh, the amount of time that a signal takes from to get from a, a satellite orbiting the globe to a position yeah, on the ground. I love it when they try to use things like this to disprove like the globe. Like when Ozian was debating Witsit the other day, Witsit was using like laws about the universe and stuff, like Hubble's law and stuff to try and say that oh, yeah, well Hubble's Hubble's law says this and we don't see this right. Wait, so you're saying Hubble's laws right? Is that what we're doing here? <laughs> it's always, it's always first law of flurf, uh, which, and then they try, then they're like, oh no, that I just want, I just want to cherry pick out this part, which is the law or sorry, the fallacy of stolen concept. They're yeah. like, okay, so you want me to accept that they sent measurements from a satellite orbiting the globe and that the time, this time, this time, this satellite orbiting the globe, therefore flat. But never mind the part about orbiting the globe. Like, how is your measurement any good if... It says the word flat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, Dawn presented... Um, she's, she was like a baby flurf. She uh, she oh. went with the, the NASA documents of modelling. Oh, that's precious. It says precious. flat, non-rotating. And like, yeah, me and Ozzy never read. like, oh, bless you. You never read... Um, <laughs> M. Like, Shedler. This seven, it says gravity. This <laughs> M, M. Shedler says, got to drop out, but thanks to you and Craig for a great flurf wrangle. Pro, prost. Prost. Yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, I got a couple others. Uh, hold on. Kevin was the tool there, guys. Uh, look, yeah. All right. Got that. We got uh, Tim Davidson says, fight now knows my real name. Uh, not poo, not Davidson. Tim okay, Tim. D Tim Davidson says that. Not Poo, not Tim. Tim Poo. Tim Poo. Steve6464 says, so flurfs are not master debaters like you two? Well, um, I don't know if they're master debaters. However... I'm masturbating. Yeah, I oh. want to hear about that. This morning, I went to the toilet. You know, I, I want to be a urinator. Okay, Mean. So when I was a young boy, I grew up oh, on the no, on the, stop, stop, stop it, and, Santos. Um, I used to fuck the cows that that um, and the pigs. I used to fuck the pigs, and the cows would come. The pigs look gorgeous, and and cows are beautiful. I love the look of cows. They're... Uh oh, so sweet. We've um, tried to talk to him about this, guys, but he just doesn't get it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So somebody asked, uh, "Do I have the Santos? Does he locked up over there still?" Uh, I have my solar glasses. I hope you do too. Um, I have a couple spare pairs. If anybody's coming there, you got to call dibs though. You can have them if you're coming to meet me in, uh, Texas there. Um, oh, so we got, uh, Tim Davidson to, to you, Craig says now you're sworn to secrecy. Okay. I won't tell anyone apart from the, uh, 464 people watching. 
Lord Illuminous Poe says, this is my submission for the fourth law of Flurf. Anytime a Flurf says right, it isn't. Well, the fourth law is already uh, in, in stone. It's that uh, a, any Flurf explanation for a, an observation will contradict some other Flurf explanation for Without an observation. Fail. Oh yeah, no exceptions to that one. That is so... But just today uh, on Twitter, all right, so there's this this guy, he, he uh, vaxxed equals God's wrath is his name, seriously. Oh, him. Yeah, he's I've, so, I've blocked that. He's so dumb. Anyway, so he's like, well, the, the sun and moon are embedded in the firmament. Then Globe Slayer, who I debated a while ago, man, that guy was, I was punching yeah, down. I, 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 was, him as well. was, I was punching he, down talking to that, that guy. Anyway, so he posted a picture of the sun inside the dome, not embedded in it, contradicting his good buddy there. Then that per that particular one said that the moon is the cathode and the sun is the anode. And then it actually had Coulomb's law on it saying that uh, uh, like charges are repelled and opposite charges attract. So I said, well, by your own meme, everything that has every single object on flat earth that has a slightly negative charge will be accelerated toward the moon because that's what he's trying to claim that that's the source of the downward acceleration but that would <laughs> and, and then everything with a a positive charge would be accelerated toward the sun nothing only the things that are neutrally charged but if you ever shuffled your feet on the floor you're gone what happens in the new moon you're out of here oh it's still there Anyway, so it's painful. And that, but that contradicts Witsit and all their uh, inco incoherent dielectric acceleration nonsense, where they say that there's this const this this static uh, electrostatic um, field in the air, which of course also doesn't work because it's positive as you go up. So every negatively charged object would accelerate up. It's so dumb. They're just idiots. They have no concept. Yeah. They're they're trying so, this 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 is what's funny. I, I, I've I've come to realize this. They have no background in these things, so that when somebody put, gives them something on this topic, and that person giving them something speaks with some level of confidence, they believe it. They just absolutely accept everything that person says. So wits it says, or Bob Nodal would say this this thing and that's what causes it they're like oh that's it and then they start posting memes about it but you look at it if you know a little bit on the topic you're like that makes no sense that's not how it would work so uh, dawn also uh yes i've just been reminded dawn was also saying about how she's a, a government agent and has got top secret clearance and there's been special forces and um uh, what was she was she 23 years old well, uh, my calculations say that she must have joined the military at 17. Jeez. And being, off, being an officer by at least 18. Well, that's like Mark Steele, who at, at the age 58 said that he had 35 years research and development experience in the energy sector. Flurfs can't count. Which, well, he's not a flurf, but... Uh, Think about that. You do the math that puts him at 23 years old. He had done started research in the energy sector. The problem is he was in prison for four years. So he had to. <laughs> so certainly he wasn't doing research and development in the energy sector while in prison. So if he worked constantly from the age 19 as research in the uh, energy sector, that would explain it. But at age 33, he was a welder that was out of work. Think about right. It, they're also able to debunk all of science. It's amazing. Yes. <sighs> people. <laughs> it's, it, it's when they don't know the kind of things that people have to go through to actually, actually be qualified at these levels, they have no clue that when they make these claims, it's obvious yeah. to anybody that they're lying. That's why they... Um, it's, it's always clear when you're talking to someone that hasn't done higher education because they're the ones that are like, oh... You, know, you got a degree, haha, <laughs> you you just brainwashed, you just repeated what they told you. Well, clearly you've never been in college then because that's not how it works. No, it's you know? Not. <laughs> like if I wanted to get my master's, I would have to publish stuff. And you know, it's the original research is it's not just 
you know, you like at school, you write stuff off a board and then you know go home and study a list for for your exam later in the year. Degrees aren't like that. You have to show that you can apply the knowledge that you've learned. <laughs> yeah, you have to you have to think outside the box to. So so when people say college is just regurgitating what you're taught, they've never they have no clue what college is. No, no they've idea. never been to college. Oh, so Dave McKeegan, this is this is good. You should see Jay Tolan's excellent work sabotaging flat Earth. Oh, he's God, captured, we saw that. He's captured the moon with a thermal imaging camera showing it's clearly 3D and acknowledge it's illuminated by the sun. That's in Jay Tolan's That's most older. recent video. Yeah. He says that it's green because it's covered with vegetation. He says and there's that cities. there's cities, there's an atmosphere. He says that NASA went to the moon, orbited the moon, sent pictures back, he loved the pictures that NASA sent back. And then he says that the reason why they did that they faked it was because they didn't want to show that it was green. <laughs> my favorite thing about the video tune, my absolute favorite thing about it's Jay so Toad Media's video is the comment section. Oh, the it's, flat oh saying that so mad. And the old day are well angry. They're this so... was a channel I would religiously send people to for flat earth truth. You've been bought by the government. <laughs> Or, or is this AI? Are you AI? Yeah. <laughs> They're so paranoid. It's brilliant. Oh, that's oh. All right, let me see. We got CV McCullough says, Q touts construction as a gotcha. Then why do commercial floors have uh, FT flatness and FL level specs? Clearly they know flat and level aren't the same. Oh, that's pretty good. But th that it goes back to the point. A construction worker doing a, a construction project on on a building that's the size of a city block maybe um how big's a city block is it 100 meters let's say it's 200 meters right what's what's the the sagita at 200 meters i can calculate that really quickly here the cat the, the sagita at 200 meters is seven is point point eight millimeters so about a millimeter at at 200 meters long right so if you had a perfectly rigid beam that was 200 meters long right then and it went from one end of the construction site to the other end of the construction site uh then it would matter because then it would not flex point point seven point eight millimeters or one millimeter but but nothing is that rigid so construction no. workers when they have a when they have a, a a spirit level their their margin of error spirit level is 0.1 degree maybe which is there's 0.1 degree of curve in seven miles so there I, it's the scale the scale is so far out of out they have no damn clue they're so i try to explain to a flat earther how buildings are designed to actually like move especially like skyscrapers oh, yeah. and stuff yeah. you know yeah, that because uh, otherwise the forces from wind get too much and stuff. And like, oh, you're so dumb thinking that buildings aren't rigid. And I'm like, and this this well, came from the it's again the the NASA paper saying rigid body aircraft. I tried explaining why planes aren't rigid, and you know, you can went see the planes. You can see the so wings dumb. flex when you take off. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, and simple simple thermal uh, expansion when it heats up a little bit, though everything grows a little bit. When it cools down, everything shrinks a little bit. Right, you know about shrinkage. It's a thing. Hey, wait, wait. I told you I'm... Didn't you see the Seinfeld? Uh, <laughs> Lord Illuminous Poe says, I Poe and Tim Davidson sent you a PayPal. So you got my name. That's to you, Craig. Oh, thank you. Did you? So you, so you got, so you got I Poo and Tim Davidson sent you a PayPal. Oh, recently. Well, thank you okay. very much. I, 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 that was the case. I did respond to that. I appreciate it. Uh, Lady Moonweb says, I went to Boeing manufacturing facility, saw the wing flex tolerance machines. It's insane. Oh, yeah. They they test their designs to failure. And I, I think it's around 30 feet of flex at the, the end of a 747 wing before it, it uh, breaks. 30 feet? I'm just, just from memory. So it might be, it might be a little off. Wow. Oh. 
And then, uh, let's see, monochrome automatic light source is not poo, then Q. <laughs> not P, then Q. You see that? It's the logical statements. I, I, yeah. I got, it. got it. Okay. Then this guy, FTFE, gifted one membership. Thank you to whoever Ooh. anonymous FTFE guy is. It was Van Tom got the membership. Van Tom. Awesome. And then, oh, I like this. Uh, Icarius Crumb, it says the moon base is always a year, open, close parentheses, so it's the function that returns the current year, plus four. Shh, we're not allowed to talk about the moon base. Yeah, it's, we, I was just there last night. Shh. <laughs> Never mind, these are not the droids we're looking for. Uh, then, ra ra Rabbi. Ra band says seven eight seven wing flex is five meters. So Craig, what's five meters in American units? Um, a, about a cow and a half. Mm. How about Scottish sheep units? Um, well, in Scotland, Four. that that would be about Four. um thirteen bottles of buck fast. Okay, it's well, I don't know what that one is, but it's about four <laughs> sheep lengths. So. Uh, you you don't know that you don't know the. I mean, you're in Scotland, right? Your your normal measurement yeah. unit is sheep sheep, right? So the a sheep length is the snout to rump length of a two year old you. You know, right? You use that all the time, which is about one point three meters. Here you go. Just help, helping you out there, Craig. You you covered this in school, right? Thank you school right. yeah i was oh. birthed in a pod a few months ago are you v4 v5 of of <laughs> and why does each one get more dilapidated i don't know like, they just <laughs> keep getting broken <laughs> all right uh greg Edmonds says flurfs need to just dot 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 four dots he did put four dots and then Lord Illuminous Pooh comes again with ten dollars. Says you had your small crisis. I sent you a PayPal to make sure you'd keep it. You would keep going. It included my real name. Don't make me say it on chat. And yes, you responded on your Discord. I really appreciate the help. There you go. Uh, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not going to dox you. Don't worry. So, all right, I want to mention something here. Um, so. Uh, there we go. Albino bad guy. Albino bad guy is uh, has been around for quite a while and sent me a thing a little bit ago about a family in Florida where their their kid has had a uh, their ten year old kid has been diagnosed with cancer. So I I, I looked at it. I checked out. Um, I, I was verified some some third party uh, verification of it to make sure that it's. Uh, there's things that are actually happening there and that the names check out and stuff like that. Um, so in, uh, including some public record searches and stuff like that, because that's what I, I, I want to be, I want to do the due diligence. So anyway, it, it checks out to, to my, to my satisfaction. So I put the link in the chat there. If, if you're so inclined, um, this family has, um, this 10 year old kid has cancer and they are, they've already started some um, uh, chemotherapy, I think. And then once the tumor shrinks, they can do a surgery. So it's like three months of chemo, three months of um, surgery and recovery. So there's there's that, if, if uh, that link there, if you're so uh, inclined to send some little help there. Um, but I told him that I would, uh, I'd mention it. Craig, he, uh, he said something to you too. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, I, I meant to mention it on um, on the stream, but I totally forgot, honestly. Uh, I was going to do a post about it on my channel. So, anyway, there you go. Um, I'll probably mention it again next week. Jordy's week. here. So, Yay. Hey, George. Jo I haven't seen George for a while. Yeah, he says better was. No. Um, so, yeah, you can't go to the Eclipse because you hurt yourself. And I was just yesterday looking at the forecast. I didn't like it. Not looking good. Then I like, oh, well, let's look at San Antonio. Same. What about Cleveland? Same. 
Like, oh no. Ah. But we're ten we're ten days out, so uh we're we're okay. There's a flat earther in the chat. Awesome. So all right, so somebody over in Jaren's asked for photos of the earth from the moon. But he's not here. Yeah, there's there's quite a few. Um now for, for most of the moon landings, the, the earth was rather high in the sky, so there aren't a lot of uh, of them there is one that's uh that's a, a a faked one that flat earthers like to look at of uh one of the astronauts coming down dearth the ladder passes around quite often yeah dearth loves that one um uh, it's a fake dearth never does due diligence he never he never he hates actually checking up on stuff it's he's so easy to show that he's a liar um he they, doesn't care that he lies no he doesn't care no no it's his i, I think he his, believes the earth is flat but at the same time doesn't care if he no. lies to get his message across, yeah. which I don't understand. The if you genuinely justify it, why the would means you lie? to him. Yeah. He, he's happy to yeah. lie. Um, I mean, his whole presentation is lies. Everything in his presentation yeah. is lies. Well, Easily well, verifiable if he tried. His, when I did a stream covering his presentation, I, I found out empirically that he lies at 3.5 lies per minute. <laughs> That's a pretty high velocity of lies. Yeah, you know, it was definite, you know. So, yeah, Dave is basically a phone scammer, but on YouTube. So think about this. He was a solar panel salesman. That's what he did before. Now, it's been years since he did it. Uh, but I can tell you that outside of places that are really, really sunny, there is no actual break even point. You can never profit by putting a solar panel on your roof financially. Never. But he once did a video saying that solar panels take away the sun's energy and shouldn't be used. I... Anyway, he was a scam salesman before he was a flat earth scam salesman. That's that's the deal. And, and so that's how he knows how to scam people, because he was trained in how to scam people. Um, I, I I have been racking my brains as to how I can cheat to get him onto a, a stream somehow. I would love somebody that has a podcast to uh, have him on and then have one of us in the wings because yeah. because he he's constantly inviting himself onto podcasts and right he he makes sure that they have no scientific background because then it's easy yeah. for him to lie to them and then they're they have they have no background to know well. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Um, so I'd love to have have to be in the wings, and they're like, "Oh, I, I let's bring in my friend." And my guess is he'd run away instantly. He's a chicken. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to go in with some kind of voice changer, um, not show my face, so I could try and get some kind of conversation. Uh, yeah, I, I I am I'm considering um, doing a series of pretending to be an old woman and going on Nathan Oakley's stream. <laughs> oh, pre a, pretend quite, to be an old good, uh, voice changer. Pretend to be an old woman to dearth. He loves taking advantage. of. Oh women. yeah. No, he might get excited. Yeah. All right. Andrew Gregory has said several times, public service announcement. You need ISO one, two, three, one, one, two dash two for your solar eclipse classes. Don't get blinded by ripoffs. All right. There we go. Dave McKeegan says, as this. All right, I'll, I'll pop this up. He has uh, the uh, the video of the Earth from the moon. So I don't know where, where this uh, this flatty went, but um, I'll put this up here. And Craig, I'm not going to share it to you. In fact, he says I have to practice my text and accent. Um, how y'all doing? No, not even. No. Nope. Nope. Don't even. My goodness, that was terrible. All right. I'd like you. 16 double cheeseburgers, please. Better, but still no. <laughs> oh, sorry. 32. <laughs> there you go. All right. So here is, here's from Dave McKeegan. The TV camera from uh, Apollo 17. And there's the Earth. Who is controlling space. it? people on the ground uh on earth could be doing it 
They're talking to it through the dish you're looking at right now. I love it when they're like, how did they how did they remote control? How did they send the signal? It's right there. It's no. a dish. So dumb. They're so dumb. All right. Okay, apparently I've been told I'm not to do a Texan accent again. By nope, your chat. That, I'm I'm with them. Yeah. Try try a Can't try really an accent. Arkansas hillbilly chat. No. See, I've worked so hard, even though I still sound like a farmer sometimes, I've worked very hard to remove my Bristolian accent. And that's made it hard for me to do other accents. Okay. Sounds like an excuse. That's my me. excuse, and I'm yeah, sticking to it. A, that's an excuse there. Sad excuse. I, I reject Apparently, it. 16 yeah. Emergency Landings Prove Flat Earth is a free book. Just Google it and look oh, for a PDF. That's precious. Bless. Oh, oh adorable. It's, it's so cute when you're so easily indoctrinated, and then you go yeah. share in public places how dumb you are. I know. Yeah. Here's something that's been debunked a million times. Yeah, why didn't... <laughs> Why didn't you look into it? Why did you just blindly accept that instead of actually looking at the flight routes that would happen on the globe? Because they're sheep. Yeah, because you're a sheep there, Flat Earther. Who is it that said that? Uh, was that um, the... Flat Earther? There's a video recently that was taken to make No, 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 in the chat here. Did somebody say that in the oh, chat? Oh, uh, uh, a guy, a literally guy called Flat Earther. Oh, so creative in the name. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then he just says 73 for some reason. 73? Yeah, just just, just 73. Hmm. All right, I, I tried a Texan accent. You've got apparently try your um, British accent. Oh. Uh, pass the the beans and toast, Crakey. <laughs> now I've got to do a Canadian one. Cheers. Um, where's the maple oh. syrup, A? Eh? I'm sorry, A. Oh, eh? Take off your hoser. Right. <laughs> yeah, hoser. I like that. Oh, oh look at that. Flat Earther says the firmament is 73 miles oh, up. That's so precious. So precious. Oh, uh, you know, that's blind faith because you don't have a measurement of it. You see, you're well, they do. 73 miles, apparently. Yeah. How did you come to that um figure, Flat Earther? So dumb. So dumb. Now, Flat I mean, Earther. Sure hold on, hold on. on you know, you know Renee. Renee, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the guy that sounds like, tries to sound like Antonio Banderas? Yeah, it's like Flat Earth ASMR. Yeah, so that, he goes by Flat Earther. I don't know if that's him or not. Maybe. I've been trying to get a hold of him. I want to get him back on. He's so fun. Um, but, uh, so far, no. He, he won't respond to my emails. I, I tell, um... I, I've I've talked to Dan the Waterman that knows him in you know in person a little bit. He's Dan 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 won't talk to Renee for me. I'm like, come on, Dan. He's like, nah. So anyway, yeah. Think about this. How how could you come to the number seventy three miles based yeah, this, on this, no this, measurements, right? Because because I'm when you not... when you triangulate like Robotum did, like v Voliva did, like Gleason did. Or you parrot them like uh, Dubé did, you get thousands of miles for the height of the sun. So how how is how is the seventy three mile high firmament, um, and then the sun is thousands of miles high? Oh well, no, it's lower than that. Okay, measurements never. And then, is it seventy three miles just at like the top of the dome, or you know, as it comes down towards it, the ground? Is it, you know, is I, the dome flat or is it a, is it curved? Yeah, oh, it's, weird. it's 73 miles everywhere. Apparently rockets always blow up at 73 miles. Uh, uh, but they don't. No. All right. Uh, flat Earther now says, once you go flat by Eric Dubé song. No, I don't want to vomit. Ugh. So he's a Dubé sheep. Which I don't think... Well, he's got uh, those 200 Renee. proofs that we can't debunk, so, yeah. you know. Except there's too many debunks of the 200 proofs. It's... Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's 200 proofs that flat earthers are fucking idiots. Correct. Um, all right. Lord Illuminous Poos is a uh, obli obligatory poo joke. Why is it called the Borg Collective and not the Borgization? 
Um, I don't know. That's funny. Uh, uh, interestingly, in um, the Mirror Universe, the Borg are actually called the Borg Hegemony um, and have a king instead of a queen. What Mirror Universe is this? In the Star Trek Mirror Universe. Is this some fan fiction? No, it's in some books. Sounds like fan fiction books. No. I, I reject. I reject that. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. We got that. Oh, the oh, whole of Twitch is in okay. your chat. Amazing. The whole of all of it. Cool. It just says um, Twitch. All right. CV McCuller got your email. Thank you for that. I'll I'll see if if that's an issue. That if that would solve it. Who knows? Um yeah. There were some UHF communication outages recently due to a CME. Um, yeah, that's it. Yes, a, a Corona mass ejection. That, that's an interesting thing that no flat earther will ever touch. When there's a Corona mass ejection, the amount of time that it takes for it it, to, to get from the sun to the earth would it would be is it happens. And we can measure when it's going to happen. We can predict that we can see something happen and we can predict a future event that we will have um, things that happen as a result of a CME, right? So that's that's the essence of science. You you have a, a prediction and then you test it. Um, but it takes a while. It takes hours or days. I don't remember exactly, which is certainly more than the 73 miles that, um, that uh, Flat Earther just lied about. Flat Earthers lying? Never. That's weird. They would. No, I've never heard of a Flat Earther lying. It, it's crazy. They call themselves truthers. A lot of them I know. pretend to be religious, but my goodness, they spew lies. It's just, it never ends. I'm a truther. I'm a truther. <laughs> Here's a bunch of lies. And easy stuff that oh, they could just go and verify. Yeah. You know. All right. Mr. e -Man says four days. God. Four days for a CME to get to get to Earth. So if it's if it's no more than seventy three miles because that's the height of the dome, then how how is a seventy three miles take long? four days? That's probably really slow. Yes, George, we are saying that one must lie in order to flurf. I would even put a hashtag in front of that. It's got a lie to flurf. Somebody might write a song about that. Oh, be dazzled did. Glober mom has something for you. She says, Craig, to sound like you are from the South, just say, just say might could fix into and only drink sweet iced tea or Mountain Dew at restaurants. But why would you drink anything else apart from Earl Grey tea? You said it wrong. Earl Grey. You said it wrong. Try again. And no, no. Sweet tea? No. Earl, what? Earl Grey, hot. Oh, well, closer. One more. What? What's wrong? T, Earl Grey, hot. T, Earl Grey, hot. Yes. There you go. But I, I don't have it the same as him, though. I have a splash of milk. Yeah, I, I My like... My little baby lips. What? My little baby lips. I need to have milk in my tea. Oh, it's too hot. because... <laughs> I I actually like uh I'll put heavy cream in it a little bit. So uh Stanley Tools says imitate Christopher Walken. Oh, um I don't know if I can. I'm not No, I, I I jeez. Uh I can't do <laughs> Well, what this needs is more cowbell. There you go. There you go. I like I like Earl Grey with with way too much bergamot. That's that's I really like that. No, it's got to be a nice subtle bergamot flavor. Ooh, no, I'm on the. If other it's end. too much, if there's too much bergamot, it tastes like um, Darjeeling. Uh, it's too flowery. Da Darjeeling doesn't have uh, bergamot though, does it? No, but it's really like f floral. Oh, I think. Okay. Uh, and when there's too much bergamot in it, I think it tastes a bit too much like that. 
<laughs> Otto said, dude, that's Shatner. And Maddo 311 says, worst impressions ever. We don't do impressions. That's not why we're here. Otto says, how about a heavy Minnesotan accent? All right, yeah, sure. I can do that. Don't you know? All right. Don't did, you know? Did did you get did you get the casserole dish back? Gonna need gonna need the casserole dish back for the salad. The the the, the potato salad at the at the potluck the in the church basement. Don't you know? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. Be Brian Ashton Richards from your chat, please. He's dissing Earl Grey tea. Oh, hold on a second. Them is fighting words. Wait, where Earl, is I mean, he's got the same opinion as my wife. My wife hates Earl Grey. Uh, he says, uh, Earl Grey tastes like someone pranked you by squirting perfume in your tea. That's like, that is what my wife says. Oh, but, gross. No. Like, my wife has two sweeteners in her tea. So, but she has normal oh. breakfast tea. You know, so if we're having a cup of tea, you know, it's hers and mine completely different. So if you take a sip of the wrong one, Oh my god, it's hideous. Okay. <laughs> if I if I take a sip of hers, it's just like sweet milk flavored tea. <laughs> All right, hold on. I, we got I got a lot of kickback from my Minnesotan accent, even though I live here. Uh it's Rubik says I think you meant hot dish. No casserole. Everything's a salad. Um mm -hmm. uh, L algorithm says, Don't you need to eat some lutefisk before you can do that? I've never had any. I can't imagine ever. I've seen that. your Americans layer salad. Sermian says that was bad. Um, Chris Hoffman says that wasn't even good Minnesotan. <laughs> <laughs> when we watched Fargo, when my wife and I watched Fargo, she pauses it. She goes, she looks at me, goes, do we talk like that? I said, no. If we thought they sounded normal, then we talk like that. If but the fact that we we think they talk weird means we do not talk like that. We hear it. Um, all right. Let me let me read a couple more here. Glober Mom says, Oh, I already read that. And we got uh Vicanux says, sorry guys, that was some That's brutal Canadian. Canada. Some <laughs> yeah, that was some brutal Canadian. Craig, if you can swing a French accent, you can do better Quebecois accent than Dawn's weak attempt. Lol. Um, why would I want a French accent? I mean, let, let's all face it. There will not be a French language in a hundred years. Okay. I mean, uh, all you, all you got to do is, is, uh, you know, bring some pop guns in there and say, Hey, we're going to take over the life. Yeah. Ah, it was uh, always my favorite joke in the first episode of Futurama. You know, when, um, when Fry gets sent forward in time, oh, it's doing the countdown before he goes. And it's like 10, 9, 8, and it gets to France and it's like, you know, cease, you know, whatever in French. But then when he's a thousand years in the future and they're doing the countdown and it goes England, 10, France, 9. They're not speaking French anymore. They now speak English. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I think it's time to wrap up this, uh, this, uh, this after show. Yeah. I, I feel my, my bad for, for Kevin. He, uh, yeah. Oh. He, although he's probably already on Facebook, let me see if oh, yeah. he's, he's tagged me. He's taken. He's taken the victory lap. Of course, they always do. Uh, he has no no tags yet. Mm. I get at least five or six tags from Kevin a day. He usually <laughs> posts a couple of memes about me a day. It was funny. He, at the beginning of the debate, he had, this was his last one, and then at the end of the debate, he's like, "I want to do another one with Tony Naum." Who? Oh my gosh, he's terrible. Tony's the worst. I know. I know. I ended up blocking Tony Naum on Facebook because he was just was. He's so like, dumb. So dumb. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He thinks he's debunked gravity because he cites um, an article that is published uh, in in the, uh, the the Journal of Medicine that talks about problems measuring um, the constant with Cavendish because yeah. it's hard to yeah. do. Yeah, it's hard. And to somehow do. he's like, "See, it says you can't do it," and it debunks. And this is he's like, "This is a peer reviewed paper." I'm like. No, Tony, that's an article. You don't peer review an oh, I know. article. They, you... they don't even know what peer review means and have no, no way to check to see if something's been peer reviewed. Yeah, Rubik's, uh, Kevin is totally obsessed with me. Uh, I live rent free in his head. The problem is it's dark, empty, and smells slightly like cat wee. Fermented cat wee. Anyway. <laughs> 
Um, I might be on on Modern Day Debate next Tuesday. We'll see with Tyler. Three, four, six, oh, six, 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 five, three, seven, six, 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 nine, two, one. That guy. Um, we'll we'll see. And then uh, I I will be in person in Denver, Colorado, April thirteen and fourteen. If you're interested, uh, anybody. So well, all right, that was right. fun. Um, always a pleasure to have you. Um, beside me whilst we stomp a flurf into the ground. We were punching down. Poly apologies for punching down tonight, everybody. So, I mean, is, are we ever not punching down? It's just kind of what we do, right? It's a it's a permanent apology. So yeah. <laughs> uh, CB McCullough says, "Have him find two Tonys and bring one, the only one, the only real man in the room." Oh yeah, yeah, the other Tony. Anyway, Platonic Cuddler says, "Impromptu rap battle." No. We've got one pre-recorded that's about to come. Ready? It comes out in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Empty tune. Drop that beat. All right. Let it flow. Let yourself go. So I know that is the so, tempo. So, yeah, let's do this. So. Let's do this. Um. Yo. It's empty tune, the debunking tycoon. I shatter flat earthers, make a face of the moon. Your temps are decent, but they'll swoon in the face of my logic like a deflated balloon. Oh, empty tune, the one soon part tunes. I'm the real saints, and it flourish to their views. Your theories are like old brews, sweeping ignorance, or just spread in the fumes. FDFP stands for fumbling the facts, evidently. I drop truth bombs so splendidly. Your approach is soft, finds unrelenting. I bring the science while you're just venting. Empty tune, the buffoon with silver spoon. I pack the pseudo science, make a change their tune. You're the sidekick, I'm the room. When it comes to debunking, I'm the room. Though in this rap, it's clear indeed. I got the upper hand in word and deed. Uh, all right, hold on a second. <laughs> the soup call died. Everything died. No.